Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the second part of the Let's Try the New Player Experience of Eve, yada, yada, yada. So if you remember from last time, we had uh, completed the initial half of the tutorial, time for the second half of the tutorial. Scalatrix is right. Time is of the essence. I suspect something nefarious might be occurring at the air mining site. Undock from the station so we can begin. Undocking. Oh, we're flying away. Oh, massive lag spike. Captain, I have run several scenarios that could explain the mystery signal air discovered at the mining site. According to my calculations, the probability that the situation is unrelated to the attack on the cloning facility is exceptionally small. One in 37 million to be exact. Let us make haste and walk to the site immediately. Boom. Don't even need to click it here because it's in a mission. Just a little quick click. Quick click. Must admit, this is quite a cool little show. Holy asteroids everywhere, Molly. The scale of Air's mining operation is rather impressive for such a young corporation. They must be remarkably well funded. It is little wonder that Miss Calatrix would suspect espionage. That's a big mining laser. Speculation will have to wait. We're being hailed by that orca. He must be the fresh meat Vesper told me to expect. Elias Peltonen's a name, mining's a game. But you're not just here to mine, are you? We're here to assist in any way we can with locating the source of the unusual signal you've intercepted. Unusual's one way of putting it. Pain in my ass is another. The signal's bouncing around these asteroids like a fetto hopped up on a bad booster. Can't get a lock on its source with all these rocks in the way. Miss Calatrix has outfitted us with a mining laser upgrade that should clear several of those rocks away. Good old Vesper, always ten steps ahead. Now, let's put that bad boy to use. Mining the best way to blend in is by getting your hands dirty with the crew. Some miners fly solo, but a project this big isn't exactly a one-man show. Sometimes the only way to get shit done is with a fleet. I bet this is the first time you mined with a crew. No offense or anything, you've just got that shiny new pod smell on you. Follow my lead and you'll be mining like a pro in no time. Let's start with that app. If your competence matches your confidence. Actually, I'm going to choose to orbit it instead. Please, call me Elias. Mr. Pelton and makes me feel like an old man. My old man, specifically. Miserable son of a bitch. Target it the just same way as an enemy. Face when I left his crusty old Caldari corp to make my own way. And the mining laser is 10 kilometers, Elias. which Got is more range. Immediately. Good. I like to keep things informal here. Keeps morale up. This crew's full of people like me, following the siren song of sweet, sweet independence. Doesn't hurt that the money is good, too. Money, money, money. That's, that's one thing I link. Money! We got to earn lots of it if we want to play for free one day. And also, more importantly, much more importantly, we want bigger, cooler ships. Right, nearly in range to start off our mining lazy arm. Captain, we're now within range of the asteroid. We should stop here. Oh, it wants me to stop. Okay, I'll stop. See, I'm a fire in my laser. killer about a fresh asteroid, isn't there? Play your cards right, and that giant hunk of rock becomes a giant pile of riches. You can view your very own pile of rocks, as Elias puts it, in your cargo. It might not look like much, but that's not just a pile of ore. It's a pile of possibilities. You can sell it, refine it, trade it. 
The choice is yours. Now, time to quit ogling your inventory. This asteroid's almost dry. Just don't mind me just sitting here hoovering up an asteroid. Face the asteroid. Gonna make me some money from selling that ore. Harvesting resources is one of the best ways to earn money in New Eden. And if you're gonna make it as a capsuleer, the one thing you gotta know is that money is king. Hell, with enough isk, you'll be able to buy yourself a sweet ride like that venture over there. That's one down. And now, follow me, Captain, and stick cl Activate the afterburner! Get there faster! Giant laser, blown bigger holes to make more asteroids for mining. Oh yeah, and we need to target. TARGET! Otherwise they're gonna hoover it all up before I get there. There's a barge. Procurer. Venture. Big fleet here mining. And this little starship I've got here, the now is kind of like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's it can fight, it can mine, um, but it does nothing particularly good. Looks like you're a natural at this. Keep it up, and Vesper will be offering you my job soon. Elias, are there any words of wisdom you find particularly valuable for new miners? Oh man, where to start? First off, you got to know the difference between raw ore and refined minerals. What we're doing right now is mining ore in its raw state. For someone just learning the ropes, selling that ore is the quickest way to make isk. But you can also reprocess ore into minerals. Take Tritanium, for example. You can't find that stuff in the wild. You've got to get your hands on some raw ore, like Feldspar, and then refine it into Tritanium. You can sell those minerals or use them to build your own ships or equipment. You can find refineries at most stations. Experienced miners get way more efficient yields from their ore. So, that's something you can work towards. The asteroid is depleted. Another asteroid. We better close in on that rock, then. Orbit! Still got my afterburner? Yep, still got my afterburner. We got plenty of energy in the capacitor. That's fine. I'm starting to hear that signal that he's been bouncing around that we're even here for. Yeah, because we're not here to mine. That's just a cover story. Over as we go. Exceptionally strong in this location. Let's stop the ship here. You can break this baby apart using your civilian miner. Just like that. We can whittle away at this asteroid without damaging whatever's broadcasting that signal. Mining away. How's my infantry looking? Pretty empty, to be honest. I've only got one little tiny civilian miner doing 0 0.1 meter. Oh my word, that is tiny. Um, for example, my other character, they've got two miners Mark One, and each one of them's doing 1.9 meters cubed a second. Which, yeah, it'd fill this up in like one or two, like cycles. Because the cycles are a lot longer on them as well. In case we... Holy shit. I think we just found what we're looking for. The 
signal source appears to be that wrecked frigate. The fact that the wreck is isolated. Well, we're not going to get any solid answers all the way. I'm doing things too fast. I'm like clicking on it, approach. So skipping them for talking, I wouldn't do that so much if I knew. So yeah, obviously this part of the game is all very scripted and it's all like a storyline. But once we get past this initial stuff, it just turns into a giant sandbox. And like, because uh, we chose to do the tutorial, you can choose to skip that at the beginning. Like, um, it gave me that little option, remember. Um, but this is the new player experience, so we want to show it. The signal is strongest in the vicinity of the Dramiel's cargo hold. So we'll loot it. Love the feeling of striking gold. Loot all. So we got the black box and black anyway. box, a device designed to survive the destruction of the vessel carrying it. Such boxes can be used to record vital flight data, but also to store valuable items. That's nice and all, but can you open it? Negative, Elias. Captain, the box is protected by multiple layers of encryption. While it's theoretically possible to hack into such a container, you will need significantly more training in that skill before attempting such a feat. Don't think it's safe to crack it open here anyway. Where there's smoke, there's fire. One scout ship might mean they got friends lurking nearby. If we could trace that signal, so could... I don't want you out there alone. I'll send some of my best pilots back with you. Safety and numbers and all that. Wisely stated, Elias. Well-armed company will be most welcome. I do what I can. If someone went to the trouble of protecting whatever's in that box, it must be something valuable. I bet whoever sent that scout ship will be real salty that we got our hands on it. Stay sharp, Captain. And we're by. I thought I heard some daka dakas. Station. I'm certain Vespa is more than eager to see what. I already gave the order to Doc. I thought. Yeah, I did. I did. I already gave the order to Doc. It's all good. Ah, because I gave the dock thing early, I think I've managed to, I managed to dinky doodle the mission chain. Because I did the dock command too early. That's the problem with tutorials. Now dock. Docking request has been accepted. Docking round two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. spaghetti owls. Have I broke? Have I broke the game? Oh, no. Am I at the wrong... I'm at the wrong thing, that's why. This is the wrong place. That's why it's not working. Oof, woo. It's me the dirt. That's the wrong station. And away we go. So I didn't break the game. I clicked the wrong thing and docked at the wrong station. Here's the right one. It's 
setting course to a docking perimeter. Your docking request has been accepted. Your ship will be towed into station. Welcome back, Captain. Elias tells me you've brought a gift. Indeed we have, Miss Calatrix. And this gift comes wrapped in several layers of complex encryption. I'll pass that box along to our expert hackers. If they can't crack it open, no one can. Thank you for finding it. Air is once again in your debt. Elias also informs me that you're carrying a fair amount of ore. I can take that off your hands in exchange for some isk. Mind if I take a look? Open your inventory. Captain, open your ship's cargo hold. In order to sell the ore, you must first transfer it from the cargo hold. Now, let's switch over to select the ore to see what you can do with it. In this instance, we want to sell it to Miss Calatrix. <laughs> Nearly done. All that's That's a nice haul you've got there. I've transferred the ISK to your wallet. I think you'll find I've... In your wallet, you can view the total balance of ISK in your possession. So we can see we inherited, we started off with 5,000. Then that cost us 33,000. This gave us 300,000. And then we just gained another 28,500. Uh, with 2,280 tax on top. And our final balance is uh, just under 300,000. Happy days. But we're going to need to make millions. Does it let me... Where's the... I'll come quickly down and go to ship tree. We'll take a look at you in a second. Let's just pop you over there out of the way. You can see this is for my faction here. There's the little Corvette Ibis I've got there. The now only costs 6,000. So yeah, that's nice and cheap. We want to go from this little starter ship that's not really good at anything to maybe a dedicated fighting ship. Like the, I don't know, is it the Bantam there? Is that one? The Condor? Rope Shield Bristol? I think this is a dedicated missile fighting one by the looks of it. Missiles and rockets. Half a million! And that's just for a little base baby fighter like type uh, frigate here. You want a military grade. 11 million for this one, the hook bill there. You want an interceptor. 15 mil. Assault. 22 mil. Covert ops. 17 mil for that one. 16 mil for that one. And 19 mil. And that's still just in the frigates. And there, this is the symbol that you need. You can't get past this symbol without uh, the Omega upgrade, which is the monthly sub, kind of like your WoW sub or your whatever sub. And if you ever let it lapse, you can just only use this stuff down here. And then again, you can get to Destroyer, but you can't get to these fancy Destroyers. You can get to Cruiser, but you can only get to the Navy variants, you can't get to the Fancies. The Battle Cruisers you can get, but you can only get to the Navy, you can't get to the Fancy. Battleships you can get and then the Navy battleships we can get to the special fancy ones and then you cannot get to dreadnoughts carriers or titans and then there's a lot of skills that make even these ships a lot more powerful you can't get to without Omega either so you can get to some really powerful ships like a battleship this Raven Navy issue battleship which is the one that looks a bit like a javelin from the front but it looks nothing like a javelin from the silhouette there um, but there'll be a lot of fancy skills that you cannot get to make that even more powerful. And look at that. Half a billion. So yeah, we're going to be needing to make some uh, good money if we want to get Because battle cruisers, destroyers, it's big ships. Like One of the things I've always liked about EVE is when it comes to space games, I'm not really keen on dogfighting. Um, it's just never had an appeal to me. I'll do it and I enjoy it in my space games but it's not the thing I enjoy about my space games kind of thing I like the big slow clunky powerful battleships when it comes to space combat so uh, for me wanting to get down to these ships is something I really want to do I'm not really that bothered about working my way up this 
sort of dog fight and stuff. And Eve is the dog fighting is not really what his specialty is. You've seen it's like it's you sit, you click. It's like not dog fighting like you'd get in any other space game I've ever seen. It's nothing like Star Citizen's dog fighting, as you can see, or. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, oh, not ev not ever space. There's another really big space game that's similar aspect where you sort of they sort of go anywhere, do anything, sort of. Oh, oh, what is it? Oh, it's the one with the more realistic, forced more realistic thing. Like because Star Citizen, you can just sort of change and look whatever angle you want, but you do get it's more efficient. If you do, you like your pitch and your yaw, and you like move like a fighter kind of thing. But there's nothing to stop you just looking and moving whatever direction you want. There was another game, but it does sort of force you into the more realistic. You have to do the realistic turns where Star says, and it just gives you like debuffs to your movement if you don't do the realistic turns and that. Um, oh, I can't remember what is it is. It it's not ever space. I can't remember what it is, but it's like. Another really big space game that's similar, has that similar sort of go anywhere, be anything vibe. Um, yeah, obviously all these here. And also, or, or we want to get a mining frigate, and then I'm going to, if I want to get to the mining barges, which I really want to get in these Omega Chain. At least, yeah. You got all these fancy cool Jesus, kill, I like it. With these pirates, you can get all the way up to the Rattlesnake battleship. Got a Titan there, the Condor. Carrier. Kind of like the sound of having a carrier as well. I feel like that would be a really fun experience in EVE. Like, going on a carrier in Star Citizen is a wee bit lackluster if you don't have a lot of people to play with. But in EVE, it sounds fun because I think you can have a lot of, uh, like, drone fighters. I think that's what the carrier does, unless you have lots and lots of drone fighters. That sounds like a really fun way to play. Like you just rock up and you just like, boom, spew out tons of things to attack the enemy. That sounds kind of fun. Yeah. And there's a lot more traditional sort of MMO aspects that you can this compare to Star Citizen 2, whereas you can build your ship to be like a healer, or you can build your ship to be DPS, you can build your ship to be tanky, and obviously different ships are diff better levels of scale at that role like you can battleships are probably quite tanky and then you probably you can get battle cruisers that are specifically designed to heal and, and you maybe get battleships that are specifically designed to heal because you see they're definitely got different buffs here like a uh, mimtar battleship bonuses mr battleship bonuses per skill level so you can see these sort of hybrid ones are really good for a uh, giving you bonuses from having multiple skills and multiple different so like these ones I'd imagine will be a lot more powerful than the individual Mimtar and Amar ones because they only get buffs for the one thing whereas those ones will get buffs for two so I'd imagine that these ones would be more powerful if you've got skill, both skills upgraded so that'd be kind of good because obviously you'll start going down this tree first then maybe like you jump over like you're doing this one's tree then you jump over then you do this one's tree to the destroyer level, then once you've got both of those destroyers quite strong, you can grab one of these and get its. Oh, there isn't a destroyer for this. Oh, you do the cruisers then. Yeah, I'd imagine that'd be quite good. Right, I've been distracted for long enough looking at these trees because they're kind of cool. Now, what do we need to do again? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, go back to wallet. Wallet, 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 wallet. Oh, we, we've done that next. market transactions will show you how much ISK you acquired by selling the ore. We need to go back to all of them. Market transactions. The highlighted entry shows how much money you received from Air in exchange for the ore. The wallet offers a wealth of information. Whenever an item is sold in New Eden, a tax is applied to that sale. The market entry displays your most recent transaction tax. Once you've finished gazing at your newfound riches, close your wallet and inventory. It's time we turned our attention to a more pressing issue. The mystic Captain, I trust you'll keep quiet about the wrecked scout ship. E. So long as whoever was spying on us hasn't realized we've found it, Air will have the upper hand. Mission reward. Third of a million. Happy days. As good as they are, it'll take some time for my team to hack through the encryptions on the box. You might as well use this time to explore what New Eden has to offer. 
Have you checked out the agency yet? It's the best way to find things to do. Miss Calatrips is right, Captain. In the agency, you'll be able to peruse a variety of activities, many of which will help you grow as a Capsuleer. If mining tickled your fancy, as the saying goes, you might be interested in viewing the Agency's dedicated resource harvesting section. As you can see, there are a variety of options available to you. If you enjoyed your time mining with Elias, you might find asteroid belts and ore anomalies worthy of pursuit. Elias spoke highly of your knack for mining, almost as highly as Valen did of your prowess in combat. It's clear you've got potential, Captain. I can put you in touch with a few people who can help you grow that potential into something great. You can find them in the agency, under Career Agents. I suggest you take a moment to familiarize yourself with what each Career Agent has to offer. They specialize in various forms of combat, industry, and exploration. Missions provided by Career Agents offer a variety of rewards including new skills, ships, modules, and money in the form of ISK, making them both lucrative and educational. So basically these are starter missions, which uh, will start you on the path of what you want to do. So if you really want to be a miner, you'd go to the industry one that helps with mining. And if you really wanted to be a trader, you'd go to the industry one that helps with trading. If you want to be a soldier, if you want to be an enforcer, um, yeah, you just choose which one of these. And these one these ones here are all in the same location. So I would personally what I'm doing on my other character right now is I'm halfway through three of them. And I plan to do all of them before I continue any more. So I started off with the ore one because I wanted to just make money as fast as possible. And so I thought, alright, I can do lots of trading and not trading uh, lots of mining. And one of the things I really like about mining is it's great because a lot of my times my work it is really quite heavy it's quite physical so i come home and i'm quite physically tired which makes me a wee bit mentally tired too so one of the things reasons i like mining in games like this so much is because it's a wee bit more laid back it's a le it's less octane is a way i describe it less sort of ah. Oh, in there, like guns blazing or in a race, or it's not as high octane in its sort of playstyle. So I can sit, I can put it up, I can start trading, I'm doing gameplay, I'm earning money, I'm playing my game, getting my stuff done that I want done, which in this case is making money. And uh, I can have up on the other screen like a video, I can have up on my second screen like a new TV series on Netflix and Amazon Prime, whatever, or some video on YouTube. So I can sit mining on this screen, relax and watch the video on the other screen, and it is just one of my favourite ways to spend my time. Like, I do that. So whenever I do a trade run in Star Citizen, it's normally just after work, and I'm just one tired, but I want to play my game and make money. And that is one of my favourite ways to spend time. And I've seen, I've done it a couple of times in this game now, and I'd love doing that. So that's, I think that's going to be something I'm going to be doing from going forward. Um, which one of these I choose first? It doesn't really matter. Let's say... Uh, just do Enforcer. Science and Trade Institute. Science and Trade. Oh, they're all Science and Trade Institute. Right. Let's just do Enforcer. Set Destination. Because they're all the same place anyway for these ones. One last question I would like to ask. Miss Our investigation is still in the early stages. But I have two theories. Where's my shit? Oh, I'm super zoomed out. may have been motivated by simple greed. Air has no shortage of competitors. Some would kill to acquire our groundbreaking technology, literally. A more worrying possibility is that someone is trying to stop us from pursuing our research. While Air takes pride in disrupting the corporate tech scene, there are those who think we push the limits of innovation too far. The technology suppression laws in New Eden are draconian, if you ask me. Here's hoping this mystery box has the answers we need. We found a glitch. Once my team has cracked it open, I'll be in touch. Much appreciated, Miss Calatrix. I await any and all updates with bated breath. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I don't breathe.
Captain, when you're ready, we can undock and begin the next phase of our journey. I do wonder how you'll die next. I suppose that is what ancient philosophers called morbid curiosity. Undock. We gotta do two jumps to get to us. To kill us. I will teach you how to navigate in space. The primary mode of interstellar travel through New Eden is via stargates. We will proceed. Stargates are also called Jump. after that rousing introduction to New Eden. It's nice to be in space without the threat of imminent peril. Though this is New Eden, peril often approaches when you least expect it. I think I can also just put my autopilot on, right? Oh well, we'll do it after this, and then it'll automatically do the second jump for me. I think. We're gonna jump through this. Ooh! Ba 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 jump ba 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 da da. Then we're here. Star gates are also called jump gates because of the way ships seem to jump between distant locations. Now, initiate jumping to your destination. Oh, well, we can change that. That'll be kind of good. We need to do that at some point. Just do that. How do I get all pilot again? Settle you, Captain. You've already proven yourself capable in battle. I'm certain you can handle whatever New Eden throws your way. And if you cannot, at least you are immortal. You can be reborn into a new clone body to try again. I believe this is what humans call optimism. Oh wait, I don't think I've got a... Wait, no, I have got it set here. I can't remember how to do autopilot and I thought I just clicked this and went in and it was like, autopilot was one of them. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. Though, that's going to be as another part. So, I'm going to go dock, and I suppose I'll see you all if you want another part next time. Because that's us finished the sort of main tutorials now. We're just jumping straight into the sort of starter missions to let you get your feet. We're in the sandbox mode now. And the missions are just little, little, sort of guide rails. Like, it's the sandbox is huge, and there's lots of stuff to do. And the, these missions are just sort of... Starter guide rails? Is that? I thought that was a dead body flying there. It's not. It's something further away. It's a ship. So yes, hope you've all enjoyed this. I shall see you maybe all next time if this continues, if it gets any interest. bye -zy bye